I'm going to use this video to address a few issues with our camera controller and also fix a few bugs and stuff I noticed from the previous video and just to make this script complete so we can move on with our game and um, the demo is now live on Unity Chat Channel I'll put it in the description and you can visit that for free it's a really nice, I just want to show you guys it's a really smooth script and it works really well so I can't really show you that with my, cam with my um, screen recording software because it might slow things down so um, the demo will just show you what it's like Okay, so the first thing I noticed, if I hop into my world camera, I spelt the Euler angles wrong, I put an A instead of an E, I'm going to copy and paste it. This is the only this is the only place we used it, so I'm just replacing that variable with the E. Okay, so um, I don't know if you guys remember or been following along, but um, when we were coding our mouse drag, we always need the raycast to interact with an object, so we, also, so we made our invisible plane here in outside of the terrain so the raycast can actually hit it but it turns out now we can drag upwards and there won't be a plane here so there is no object to interact with our GUI box well there is now because I fixed it, I'm just going to show you what I did so instead of having a world plane just at the bottom I've made a world kind of cube with six planes and now no matter where we rotate the mouse is always going to have an object to interact with and then we can draw a raycast uh, GUI box So if you want to fix that guys, if you've been following along, just make a cube instead of that one plane at the bottom and everything will be fine. Okay, so the next thing was that if I play the game, so everything's working cool, but the thing is if I hold control and right click to move and rotate, we still get our little indicator here to show you that the unit's going to move there. So I don't want that to happen because I've hold the control key. I want to actually drag and rotate and not control any units. So really easy fix, just go into your mouse script and um, where we input the right mouse button okay we can say well if we click the right mouse button and the left control key is not down so we can put the exclamation point for not input get key I'm going to type in left control then it will come up key code left control okay so now when the control key is not down then it will create itself okay so now when we play the game we can rotate without any distractions and there won't be any confirmations of units moving somewhere so right clicking nothing's happening now really easy fix so let's just dive into the world camera I'm going to tidy up a few things here it turns out that we only need the mouse X and the mouse Y when we're rotating we don't need these two values anywhere else in the whole script so I'm going to remove them from the late update because they're not important and I'm going to find the rotation script and put them at the bottom of this method so now the mouse X and the mouse Y are going to update after we've found out our rotation in this script. Okay, fixes that. Now it's just a bit tidier. Okay, so if we go back up to the apply scroll method, where is it? There it is. Um, well, it turns out that we can times this by time delta time because if we're scrolling over a period of frames, this value is going to be updated on every frame. So in this case, we want to times it by time delta time just to keep things smooth no matter which platform we're running on and because time delta time significantly reduces this value I'm going to change the ease factor and this ease factor is going to change to 150 okay and um, I was thinking well we could use time delta time every time we use the mouse scroll wheel input so if I hop into edit project settings input we can change the sensitivity I've changed it to 0 0.5 rather than 0 0.1 so just a subtle change so we don't have to times it as much when we use it in our scripts Okay, guys. And another thing I noticed was that in the web player, there's a considerable difference between the scroll wheel value than if we're running in the editor or if we're running on the Mac or desktop. So to to address this, I don't know why this is. You might want to do some research about why this is. But to address it, I've just put if application is web player because in the web player, there's the scroll is significantly more sensitive than anywhere else. I'm going to change the ease factor. I'm going to make it. 20 maybe and that will slow down a bit okay so now when we scroll on the web player it won't be as sensitive I don't know why this is like I said so you guys maybe send me a message <laughs> if you find out why that is okay so this tidies up the scroll wheel value now it's consistent and another thing we can do in this supply scroll is if we scroll down here we've updated our camera Y position here but we've got a, we've got a method to do that and it checks the dead zone and everything um, here it is, update camera Y. So we've got a dead zone, we, we've, we've optimized this value so instead of just giving it the desired scroll position Y, we can just say update camera Y. 
with the desired scroll position. Okay, there's no point using the position Y because we've got a really cool method to update the camera wire here. So instead of that, I'm going to put that. So okay, so I'm going to move on now. I'm going to work out the minimum height, um, and be, and we can't hard code the minimum height based on the class variables because we've put maximum camera height. We couldn't. We could just put minimum camera height, but the thing is, the terrain is always changing in height. So depending on how high it is, the minimum height might not be valid. We might go inside the terrain. So instead of defining it up here, I'm going to make a new method. But firstly, I'm going to define a couple things. I'm going to define a public layer mask. Layer mask, and I'm going to call it terrain only. Okay, so I'm going to use this layer mask and apply it to a ray cast, and I only want the ray cast to interact with the terrain, and that's why I've called it terrain only. So I'm going to hop back into the script, and our layer mask should come up any second. Okay, so at the moment it's nothing. I just want the ter this ray cast we're going to code to interact with the ground because our terrain has been applied to the ground layer. Okay guys, so everything else is going to be ignored with the terrain only layer mask. And I'm also going to make one more private float. I'm going to call it minimum distance to object. Okay, I'm going to make this, I don't know, 40. And this, I could, we could call this minimum distance to terrain or minimum distance to ground, but I've just called it object because we might change this in the future. So the camera will not be able to go 40 units within the ground, within the terrain Y position. Okay, so again, you can edit this if you want in the future, but I just thought 40 units is cool. We'll never be above our units in the game, although even though we'll be above the wind turbine, but we'll talk about that in a sec. Okay, so now we can go ahead and code a new method going to do it below late update. So I'm going to code a method to calculate the minimum camera height. Okay, I'm going to call it public float because we're going to return the minimum camera height in this method. Min camera height. Okay, that's cool. So I'm going to create a raycast here. Raycast hit, I'm going to call it hit. And similarly like we did in the uh, which method was it? The other one we used the raycast. This one. We, I'm just going to copy and paste this uh, raycast statement. I'm going to bring it into our new method. Okay. Instead of using desired position, I'm going to use transform position. So the current position of the camera. Okay. And it's going to go directly down the, to the terrain. And now we can bring in our terrain only layer mask. And we can put it here inside the raycast statement after the length of it. So layer mask terrain only. Now this layer uh, raycast will only interact with the terrain. So to work out the minimum distance, it's very easy to do this. I'm just going to put min camera height equals hit point y. So we get in the y position of where the raycast hit the terrain plus the min distance to the object, which is 40 units. Okay, so then we're going to work out the terrain y position and just add on 40 units so we don't go below that position. So we've got the min camera height. I'm going to find it up here because what if we don't hit any objects with our raycast? Because remember, the raycast only hits the terrain. So we can just define it up here. Min camera height equals world terrain. Get in our terrain object. Transform position y. So just the default y position of the terrain. Okay. And after we worked out the min camera height, we can then just return it. Return min camera height. So this ver this method returns a value. So we can actually treat it as a value in our game and we're going to put it in a couple of methods I think the apply scroll we need to do so the desired scroll position Y is greater than the max height we can say or desired scroll position Y is less than min camera height method because it returns a value if this is the case we can return okay guys I'm just going to make this a bit nicer to read I'm just going to minimize the code here so we doesn't take up too much room. So let's just move into place. Okay, we need to do this minimum camera height in one more place and that is when we update the camera's uh, Y position. So the, if the new height is greater than max camera height or the new height is less than minimum camera height, bring back that value, then return. And we cannot define the minimum camera height at the top of our script because it's always changing depending on where our camera is above the terrain. Okay, so that's that sorted out. Now we can, I'm just going to go to the update camera. Let's just, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm just fussy about the code. I don't want it to take up too much space. 
Okay, that's cool. Okay, so I'm just going to collapse the uh, methods we've coded in this video. I'm just going to, or in the entire class, and see if everything's in the right place. I think it is. I'm just going to put the handle mouse rotation and put it at the top because that's the first method we call in our script. And then we call the apply scroll. I'm just going to comment this out. Apply a scroll using the mouse wheel and not forgetting all the trackpad if you're using a laptop and I'm pretty sure there's other things you could use as well okay that's cool so now anyone who jumps into our project can read this and know exactly what's going on okay that's cool and we've got our helper functions at the bottom as well alright so I think we're all done now let's just double check and see if the minimum height is working and we've got an error the left hand side of the assignment must be a variable okay let's just make this a uh, float sorry guys forgot about that okay is there anything else we forgot no okay let's just double check if this minimum camera thing works and so I'm scrolling right down and no matter where we are on the terrain the height will not go below 40 units of the terrain height and that's all I wanted to do really and let's just double check we don't intersect our units in the game no that's as slow as we can scroll down okay but what in the case of this wind turbine it kind of works I mean we're going up a hill here but the thing is we're always going to intersect this wind turbine so how can we do all this issue well I was thinking about this and uh, I think the only thing we can do is change the opacity or the transparency of it as we're going nearer make it invisible and as we're going away from it make it appear again but I won't do it in this video I'm going to do it in the future maybe who knows when I come to tweaking out the whole game alright guys so I think that's all I wanted to show you in this video and everything's working pretty well now so like I said the demos on unity chat channel I'll put the link in the description so you guys can play with it because it's really smooth and uh, after you played with it maybe you can decide whether you want to use it or not so thanks for watching the video guys hopefully see you in the next video